Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show Christmas Special, where in this video we're going to talk about everyone's favourite Christmas spice, cinnamon, or well, at least it's my favourite spice. So you better watch out, you better not cry, better not pout, I'm telling you why, cinnamon is coming to town. Anyway, in this video I'm going to tell you obviously about cinnamon and maybe some facts that you probably didn't know about cinnamon, and then go into a bit of detail about the proposed health benefits and also some facts about its potential safety. And then at the end, in the spirit of Christmas, I'll be doing another free giveaway, but I'll give the details to that at the end of the video. So I really like cinnamon, if you hadn't already guessed, and that's because it smells amazing and also tastes great. But what actually is cinnamon? Well, cinnamon is so named after the tree genus from which it's obtained from, Cinnamomum, and so there are several different tree species from the genus Cinnamomum from which you can get cinnamon from, and it's often obtained from the inner bark of these different tree species. And so you can buy cinnamon as dried bark strips, or you can buy it ground up in a powder. And so cinnamon is mostly used as a flavouring additive. We add it to different foods, both sweet and savoury, because let's be honest, it tastes brilliant. But where does that great taste and smell come from? Well, the main aroma you get from cinnamon comes from the organic compound cinnamaldehyde. Because cinnamon isn't a compound on its own, it is made up of various different constituents. And so there are also other aromatic compounds that also add to cinnamon's aroma. For example, eugenol is another aromatic compound that plays a key role in cinnamon's great smell and taste. But what else can you find in cinnamon? Well, in 100 grams, which bear in mind is quite a lot of cinnamon, you can find around 81% carbohydrates, most of which is dietary fibre, protein, fat, and also calcium, iron, and vitamin K. But again, remember that this is in 100 grams of cinnamon. A teaspoon of cinnamon would have more or less 1 to 2 grams. And also, this is just generic information for cinnamon. As I mentioned earlier, there are many different species of cinnamon that you can commercially buy. The two most common are cinnamomum cassia, otherwise known as sweet cinnamon or cassia cinnamon, and the other being cinnamomum ferum, referred to as true cinnamon or real cinnamon, or otherwise known as Ceylon cinnamon. And so Ceylon cinnamon is grown primarily in Sri Lanka, whilst cassia cinnamon is grown in southeastern Asia, and often it's preferred to be used in baking because it has a stronger flavour than Ceylon cinnamon. And you can also distinguish the two different types by their visual appearance. For example, cassia cinnamon is generally more a reddish brown in colour and tends to be a bit thicker, whereas Ceylon cinnamon uses only the thin inner bark and has a much lighter brown colour. But a really important difference between the two species of cinnamon is the fact that cassia cinnamon contains a much greater amount of a compound known as coumarin. Now, coumarin is another aromatic compound but it's been found that coumarin is moderately toxic to the liver and kidneys, and for these reasons, the European Food Safety Authority declared that a daily intake of 0.1 milligrams of coumarin per kilogram body weight is the tolerable daily intake, so anything above that may be causing a risk for kidney or liver damage. And so for these reasons, the EU laid down guidelines for the maximum content of coumarin in foodstuffs, and these regulations sparked a spicy debate between Danish bakers and food authorities. Um, that was quite an interesting article. But anyway, how much cassia cinnamon would you have to consume to go above this tolerable daily intake of coumarin? Well, this is kind of hard to calculate given that the amount of coumarin in cassia cinnamon can fluctuate. However, if we use this table as a rough estimate, for a kilogram body weight, the tolerable amount of cassia that could be consumed according to these regulations is between 0.4 grams to 50 grams. Whereas if you compare it to Ceylon cinnamon, due to the low amount of coumarin, more than 50 grams of Ceylon cinnamon is tolerable to be consumed. Now, if we use this again as our reference point, 50 grams is a lot of cinnamon. But as a mini take home so far, if you want to be on the safe side, it seems that Ceylon cinnamon is the better cinnamon to go for. Now, besides the great taste and smell of cinnamon, it is also often stated that cinnamon has various health benefits, as many studies have shown therapeutic effects of cinnamon, including its antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal, antioxidant, anti tumor antihypertensive, anti-diabetic, gastroprotective and immunomodulatory effects. So how much of this actually holds up? 
Well, a NICE 2019 study did a systematic review of all the present human clinical trials reported by use of cinnamon. Now, in this review, they were particularly focused on looking at any adverse events reported by taking cinnamon. And from looking at 38 different clinical trials and different case reports and case series, they found that the most frequent adverse events were gastrointestinal disorders and allergic reactions, which were self-limiting in the majority of cases. However, they do conclude that from the available data, it does suggest that cinnamon is safe to be used in routine diet as a spice or flavouring agent, and it was in general well tolerated in the controlled clinical settings. And it's only when it's used at high doses that adverse effects should be clinically monitored. But what about its health benefits? Well, according to the NIH website, there have been many studies that have looked at the impacts of cinnamon, especially for diabetes. However, it's really hard to interpret this data and compare across them because different studies have used different species of cinnamon in their trials and they've used different amounts and different timelines. And so for these reasons, there isn't really any concrete evidence. And this is further reinforced by a different 2019 study that also did a systematic review of different studies that had looked at the effects of cinnamon and glycemic status in patients with type 2 diabetes. And so comparing across 18 different studies, they found that cinnamon supplementation did reduce the serum levels of glucose, however there weren't any changes seen in body mass index, body weight, waist circumference and the serum levels of insulin and insulin resistance. Moreover, there wasn't any effects on haemoglobin A1c, which reflects blood sugar levels over a longer period of time. However, as I stated before, it's really hard to compare between these different studies. In particular, in this case, 10 of the studies didn't even identify the type of cinnamon that was used. So what's the verdict? Well, studies done on people don't clearly support using cinnamon for any health condition. And there isn't really enough information to argue either way. So what I can say is that if you do like cinnamon... You better watch out, you better not cry, better not pout, I'm telling you why cinnamon is coming to town. Or what I was trying to say was that you should just be careful what type of cinnamon you're consuming due to the high amount of coumarin found in cassia cinnamon. And so maybe that's put you into a bit of a Christmas mood, but nonetheless, this will hopefully put you into the Christmas spirit. Due to my collaborations with donorage.org, anyone who comments down below will be entered to win 60 capsules of pure resveratrol, valued at £35. And anyone is welcome to use my 10% discount code at donotage.org, which you can use by entering the code SHIKI at the checkout. So with that, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and as always, thanks for listening.